and give them the very best customised advice and strategies to achieve their goals. Visit our website, dkpco.com.au or give us a call today on 03 9023 9370. Fast, proactive, personal. That's DKP and Co. Chartered Accountants. We are more than engineers. We are more than project managers. We are more than surveyors. We are more than infrastructure specialists. We are more than planners. So, who are we? We are problem solvers, providing the highest quality service and results. We are a team of skilled professionals, focused on customer needs and outcomes. We are 23 years of industry experience, adhering to the highest safety standards. We are Melbourne, and we are right across Victoria. We are the Lanco Group, your business partner for engineering solutions. Lanco Group, we are more than you realise, and we are ready to partner with you. She lays it off to Reza Polaris. It's an absolute peach. Is driving. What a hit from Melina Rez. Wow. And Sam Kerr has a hat trick. Meet him up. One nil. This is a box that's almost like a jump. Come on, bust him in the eye. And then I'll make the box home. Feel it. Fucking dance with Joe. And I got more pops than the cop that is talking to us. Well, we're coming into this episode of Radio. It's all sad around FNR, sad around Melbourne, one of the Melbourne teams. One of the, the this show's favourite players is, is out for the rest of the season. Welcome to Radio Dub, everybody. What a, what a sharp change of pace no, no, no. from the intro music. I know, I know. The intro music, Josh, started so high. That's how I was feeling this week. And the, the dub was back. Mm -hmm. And then we head to Sunday afternoon. Melbourne Victory are flying and then... Kayla Morrison goes down and I, like I'm sitting in the box and going, oh, what's going on? She tries to come back on and it's done. Season's gone with it, Josh. How, are you feeling just as sad as I am, you know? I mean, there goes the naturalisation uh, committee. No, right? no, no, Josh. We are Australians. We stick behind, we stand behind everybody, no matter in the good times or in the bad times. And when she's back, fully fit an Australian citizen, she'll be playing for the Matildas. That's what I needed to hear. That's what I needed exactly. to hear today. Exactly. Good. But our, our hearts go out to Kayla Morrison. The worst possible news for one of our favourite dub players. <sighs> Just it shattering. Me. Absolutely shattering. Well, everybody, welcome to Radio Dub. I'm Pekula from Pong. With me today, as always, Josh Parrish. Josh, it wasn't all bad news, though, over the weekend. It wasn't. Victory still did manage a 5-1 victory. The dub was back. We had some really exciting results. We had some really exciting, some great players and some great moments, some sad goalkeeping moments, which we'll get into later on in the show. Um, some big wins and some some teams that we expected having a dominant performance and, you know, we love to see it. What were your thoughts on the dub being back this weekend? I thought it just reaffirmed uh, our preseason predictions. Mm. I mean, all three of the teams I had in my top three in Victory City and uh, Sydney all winning. Uh, Victory and Sydney, certainly the two most convincing, even if uh, Newcastle put up a little bit more resistance than Adelaide did. But what I found most striking was that Jeff Hopkins and the Victory players didn't even seem to think they played that well despite winning 5-1. So uh, it's a scary <laughs> thought to think about what yeah. a good performance might look at like from this Victory side if playing badly means you win 5-1. I think Victory have set themselves high standards and I think they like to maintain those very, very high standards. I was at the game. Um, it was my first time ever seeing the Victory women play um, live and seeing Kyra Cooney cross, and we'll speak that, about that a little bit later. But for me, Victory, they were just clinical in front of goal. Mm. They Their whole performance wasn't wasn't perfect. There were moments where a little bit disjointed, some passes went awry. And defensively, I did actually think before Kayla Morrison did go off, they were a little bit shaky. They weren't amazing, but they're such a great team that, 
Adelaide really couldn't do much. They had a few chances going up front, Adelaide, but they never really were... You never really thought they were going to score. But victory, they were they were OK, but it's the first season, the first game of the season. There's still potential transfer business to be done with this victory side. We saw them add Lynn Williams. Yeah. Uh, they've got so many options... Uh, there's another player who's uh, potentially en route, uh, we're hearing, uh, which hasn't been made public yet. But uh, Alana Murphy being elevated to a senior contract as well, which is fantastic to see for one of the brilliant FV emerging products. And uh, when we spoke to Melina Ayres a week or two yeah. ago, uh, she was singing her praises, saying that she'd been absolutely killing it in training. So the competition for places I in this side is unbelievable. Like. Like you just mentioned, Melina, who didn't play because she had a little bit of a hamstring, hamstring soreness. Mm. I think that's so impressive that they are able to put like put her in the not, not play her, have Harriet with us, who didn't have the greatest game, but was was serviceable with Zimmerman and Privatelli and Kyra Cooney cross playing just a little bit, mm. you know, a little bit deeper. It allowed them to, you know, have so many options going forward, and to think that they've got Lynn Williams coming in, Melina Ayres can come in. Every other team's defensive, like defensive makeup, they're going to be really scared when these mm. the victory are coming down, especially when they're they are moving fast across the field and attacking on the counter. I saw Privatelli on the right hand side do this beautiful chip. It was my favorite moment of the entire game, and crossing the ball and Zimmerman just missed it on the um, on the right hand post. But they will move so smoothly, so clinical. Kyra Cooney cross on the left hand mm. side. It was. I was very impressed, but they weren't amazing for the whole 90 minutes. Yeah, I mean, this is a similar theme to what uh, Jeff Hopkins hit after the annihilation of Melbourne City in the derby and that ridiculous Lisa Devana goal that day uh, that he thought they were capable of more. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, that's uh, it's a marker to lay down to the rest of the competition. But with Kayla Morrison's injury and her prognosis out for the season, of course, it's a short W League season and no one comes back for an ACL yeah, no, in 12 possible. weeks. So we're, we're one game down of the, out mm, of the 14. Of yep. The, so. so, you know, you, that's there's just no chance that she'll be back. Yeah. What's the answer at the back for, for victory there? How do they reshuffle it? Because they've got so many midfield and attacking options, but maybe defensively they're a little bit thinner. Maybe a, a Paige Zoas might come in to fill that role. That is true. But we, we did see Courtney... Uh, Nevin play mm. in the if for the for the Matildas in the middle sure. she could come in. Um, I, I I've I've raised objections to her playing as a centre back in the national team, but maybe in the dub it's not quite as much scrutiny uh, on you in that role, so you, you can get away with Nevin playing as a centre half. Yeah, th- like that might be their option, but I, their bench defensively is a little bit, a little bit light. I will say so they do they might they they're probably going to need to like do a little bit of a quick bandage job for now and see if they can get any international players maybe that uh, a little bit later and all can look a little bit more better, look a little closer locally, see sure. if there's some NPR players the last season who did, you know, had a season or a bit and, you know, can uh, maybe come in and fill the ranks for a little bit. I thought Adelaide looked a bit better when Chelsea Dorber came on. Yeah. I'm excited about her this season. I actually... Adelaide, the whole club of Adelaide, women's and men's, seem to have this thing where they are they just they're not they don't know how to just finish finish chances sometimes that, that it just doesn't happen for them <laughs> i was the first half i thought adelaide were very very poor they didn't really do anything they had a few chances um but i thought that uh for instance warts was really really good and you know i they did score one goal but i thought she she definitely deserved her goal maybe could have scored a few more uh but for me, they just they miss something that that like they like it's not the words don't come to me for it, but they aren't as bad as the result. The five one, mm. I think, just think the victory are very clinical when they they get their opportunities. I just don't think Adelaide are as bad as the five one result. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I, I think this team has more to give, and I suspect they've got another signing on the way as well. A uh, player with. Uh, Matilda's cap or two under her belt, so that, that that's going to uh, that's going to help. Um, do you do you think Adelaide can contend for finals this season? Obviously, the scoreline is ugly, uh, but I do like some of the talents that they've got in that side. And as you say, the scoreline didn't reflect how I, they played. I think they will be on the fringe. I think they're going to have mm. to battle 
with the likes of Brisbane Raw um, to try and Canberra to try and make that final, final spot. Because for me, Victory, Sydney and City as well, I just they just look very complete. Canberra, where they're home, they're gonna they're gonna secure a lot of point points playing at home because they're very good, great there. They didn't show it this weekend, but they are always really t- tough to beat at home. I think Adelaide. They're going to have to beat up on the teams that are around, that, that are below them sure. and around them if they are going to be capable of making finals. But they will be pushing it and it will be a long season for them. It won't be like Victory, who probably will cruise. Like, it'll be in a pretty comfortable first gear for the majority of the season and then they'll ramp it up near the end of the season. Word on Kyra Cooney Cross. I mean, she's been put under a lot of scrutiny with the national team in a number six role, Josh, but this is Josh. more comfortable. Excuse me. <laughs> here, just as I stifle a sneeze. <laughs> I want to want to say this. This is my first time ever seeing Kyra Cooney Cross play in person. And, and when I, you're in the press box and you got the the prime, I view. start. I'll be honest. I started very high, and made my way to the press box. And I had a strange vantage point to start a game. Seeing her from the press box, some of the stuff she was doing, just she was toying with players. Like mm. people, they couldn't get near her, and her she was quicker than I thought she was. I didn't think. I didn't think she. Has ever looked in like real relatively quick on TV, but in person and some of the passes she was making, her ability to just play off Privatelli as well, they are. I think she's by hands down the best player in the uh, in the dub. Was almost, almost about almost. We almost there. had a uh, no, 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 a swear no, jar. No, no, but I but, I but I caught myself. She's just so calm on the ball. And I think that with Kayla out, she may actually have to play a little bit deeper um, because they've got so many attacking options that they can afford to maybe have her a little deeper and just protect the back line a little bit. And, and I think that actually would help the Matildas as well. So then if she's playing in the dub in that position, she will only be better when she's playing for the Matildas in that position as well. So an ACL for Kayla Morrison, an ACL for Ellie Brush, all our favourites are going down. Uh, is there a defender... Uh, that we could see recovering this season and maybe leading the way for a, a Matilda's, uh, let's say, uh, a, a bolter job. Are you are you hinting at anybody, Josh? Is that what, what you're doing? Well, I mean, there's there's one player who's coming back from terrible injury, plays centre half, and has looked very very good in the past, and has indeed spoken to us on Radio Dub. Maybe uh, oh. Chelsea Blissett could be in the mix. Well, Josh, you know, anyone who comes on this show is in automatically one of my favourites. <laughs> or automatically. Yeah, and you'll I, get bias coverage for the rest of, course, of the season of if course, you come on come for an on. interview. That's an in, that's an um, incentive. No, no, but for me, Chelsea, she didn't play. Uh, this weekend Mm -hmm. Uh, for me I think it's going to take a little bit a little while but before her injury last season she she was the talk of the town people were excited you know they thought maybe she you know she could see herself getting into the Matildas lineup and I think if you know she's not back till January I believe she told us and once she is back in there I think with City like solidifying their squad and being a little bit better I think it's going to give her a lot of confidence and not feeling under pressure as opposed to she had played last season. She would have been under constant pressure and her defensive work rate may have been blurred by the results that City got. Sure. I think that uh, with her coming in this season and the team being a lot better, we're going to see her at her full, you know, at her, her ultimate best. And I think she could she could get in the team of the season at the end of the year and even better, she could make it into a Matilda squad. Yeah, a long way to go, of course. Emma Checker and Winona Heatley uh, starting at the back for, for Melbourne City. But uh, one player we've usually seen at centre centre back and has made her triumphant return uh, in a defensive midfield role is Rebecca Stott. I mean, uh, just what a story. That is my favourite. I don't care what happens for the rest of the dub season. That is my ultimate favourite story mm. because... She went through something that is more than football and to see the football community get around her. And for her first game back, she played incredibly well. Um, you know, I was, thought she was really involved oh, in yeah, getting high up the park. Some of the passes yeah, she I played, th- I was thinking, gee, I mean, it looks like she's played midfield all her life. I thought that it was going to take her a little while to, you know, to build her confidence, to her fitness and even some confidence around the um, the field, you know. It's been a little bit, been a little while since she's played at this level. But... She seemed calm. City seemed 
City, like, it was hard for City to break down Canberra because Canberra at home is, is the ultimate challenge. You know, you're, if you're getting away with a draw down there, good for you. Um, but she's only going to get better and with that, City are only going to get better and that may be... That seems like a very daunting thing, especially with Kayla Morrison going down out down the road. It might mean that City might actually go a little bit further than what we once what's once what we predicted at the start of the season. I wanted to share something uh, from Joey Lynch's piece and, and what he said on the national curriculum the other night about this, because if people don't know, uh, Joey, one of the most productive and uh, Josh, he's the busiest, he's, he's the busiest, busiest man, man in Melbourne. <laughs> journalists uh, covering the game here and, and one of the most hardworking, well, the most hardworking, I would argue, if you see how many presses he rocks up to and how many different articles he's writing. And, I mean, honestly, with the amount of different organisations he freelances for, just doing the invoicing must take up half honestly. his time. But um, <laughs> he spoke about Rebecca Stott documenting her journey um, with the website and the blog and everything and providing that example and uh, rewound to his own diagnosis with Hodgkin's lymphoma in 2008. And the first thing he Googled after he got home from the, from the diagnosis was obviously mortality rates. Yeah. And then the second thing he Googled was athletes with lymphoma because he wanted to see an example of a sports person who had come back and ha- whose body and, you know, mind had not been completely destroyed either yeah. by the illness or by the treatment. So to go through the chemotherapy and just the trauma of the whole situation and to come back and play elite sport. I mean, Rebecca Stott has, I mean, the word inspiration is thrown around a lot, but that, that means a great deal. And I think uh, a lot of young people living with cancer will take a lot of uh, inspiration from, from what she's done. I think it's also going to provide the city girls something to win those hardest moments. Reckon Mm. can be, Guys, this is this is challenging, no doubt about it. But we, there is so much more that is challenging in life that we can get overcome this. Yeah, I mean, and it puts it in pers- into put perspective. Everything in yeah. perspective, and for a relatively young squad to have that kind of leadership there, I think that's you can't you can't manufacture that. Yeah. That is, and I think that's why City are going to do a lot better than they did last season. And even if they don't, you know. That it, there's only one trophy that goes out. There's two actually, but they go out of the this season in the season. Um, it's going to allow them to have a really united team that will not be defeated by any moment throughout the season, which is going to be quite incredible. And I mean, lovely to see. Rebecca start beating this and returning to the field is she's already scored the biggest win of the yeah. campaign. She was also at the um, she was at the victory game, uh, sitting on the bench next to Melina Rez, and uh, she was there for Kayla Morrison when she came off the tunnel. So hopefully, you know, you know. And an, and another quote from from uh, Joey's piece from Rado uh, Vitasic, the coach, who said, you know, he's been involved in a lot of great things in football. Uh, he's coached Del Piero. He's been an assistant for Ange Postacoglu's Raw Salona. You know, he's <laughs> he's he's seen a lot of good times in this game. He's won t- uh, W League championships with with Melbourne City, uh, and that's correct because yeah. we're talking about the past. We've established the precedent. Yeah, exactly, here. we have. We have. <laughs> <laughs> they were called W League championships back yeah. then. Uh, and he still said, you know, despite all of that and all those achievements and all those great memories, Stoddy's comeback is the best thing that he's ever yeah. been involved in it's incredible. and seen. Uh, in and all his years in football. So, I mean, you know, that that means a lot coming from uh, a veteran of the Australian coaching game who's uh, been involved behind the scenes in a yeah. lot of uh, the the great moments. So, Well, Stoddy's made a little – I hope it's just a pit stop and for Mel- and Melbourne City. I, I, you know, for Melbourne City, I hope she stays longer. But for Stoddy, I would love to see her back in the WSL playing – she was up with Brighton before she had to come mm-hmm. back home and do her treatment. I'd love to see her back there because I think she – her talent is amazing and she would do so well there and she could definitely help some of the s- squads down there. Yeah, and playing with her international teammate and Hannah, Hannah Wilkinson. Um, let, let's talk about the game more broadly, the, the Canberra game. Uh, City eventually got the job done. It was a wonder goal curling strike from Holly McNamara that sealed the points, but uh, Canberra, as they often do at Viking Park, put up some stubborn resistance. You know, Josh, I, I only I read this from Sam Lewis's piece uh, in the, the with the ABC, and she said the last season they didn't lose a single game there, which I'd completely forgotten. Mm. And 
it just shows how good City are to be able to have... Like, it took them a while to break them down, but I think for the majority of the game, they were quite dominant. Um, the, Canberra only had a few chances. They had an early chance. Uh, they just skied a little bit over the uh, crossbar early on in the game. But for the majority of the game, City were... They played some really nice football. The passing was nice, and they were re- really relatively compact. Um, I just think that Canberra are very good defensively at home, and they set up... Which is interesting because when you think about most teams, most teams when they are at home like to be the you know the more attacking side, but it just shows the quality of City. You know, interesting that Carly Rose back and didn't start. Maybe she's just getting back up to yeah. full fitness. That was I, I did think that, um, but I, I do think the full fitness. You know, because she hasn't played much when she's no. been overseas. She's barely kicked the ball. She's yeah. be, been on the books of overseas clubs but um you know she still made matilda's camps uh, despite that lack of football i guess we've got a a paucity of options in defense but she's in a lot of ways she's the great hope because obviously she's uh, more often seen at left back but as a central defender maybe if she can make that transition then she's another one in the frame you know we've got all these uh the weird options that aren't quite (laughs) you know convincing i haven't got that much international experience but she's one of them with weird thing is, Josh, we have too many defenders and not enough number sixes. Can somebody, you know, <laughs> somebody just transition and become a midfielder? You know, that would be. I really mean, nice. Stoddy's shown it's uh, yeah. it's a piece of piss. You know, are we are we are we getting her to become an Australian citizen too? Is that what uh, we're doing? I think she might have a few caps oh, for the Kiwis. Enough. It, we don't, it doesn't matter if we need her for Matildas. That's what we need. Um, but yeah, the city city were great, and uh, it's uh, Michelle Hayman's only just star. Uh, just started so she got to kick into gear and uh exactly. get her old uh no, no, no. strike josh, partner ash sykes to exactly josh we're gonna get five goals into five games sorry five goals five games into the season she's gonna score like 30 goals so it's okay don't worry about it all right you heard it here first 30 goals come on oh, 14 games that's that's a stretch josh come on no no no. we we set high high hopes at radio dub here high <laughs> <hopes>. <laughs> all right well we got to talk about the knicks but first uh we'll take a break and uh, come back with more radio dub here on fnr Are you looking to change your destiny in life? Be your own boss? Start your own business? If you are, you need people who understand your needs and are committed to helping you make it happen. At DKP & Co Chartered Accountants, we are more than just accountants. We are business advisors, taxation consultants and strategists that specialised in setting up businesses. We understand the client and give them the very best customised advice and strategies to achieve their goals. Visit our website, dkpco.com.au or give us a call today on 03 9023 9370. Fast, proactive, personal. That's DKP and Co Chartered Accountants. We are more than engineers. We are more than project managers. We are more than surveyors. We are more than infrastructure specialists. We are more than planners. So, who are we? We are problem solvers, providing the highest quality service and results. We are a team of skilled professionals, focused on customer needs and outcomes. We are 23 years of industry experience, adhering to the highest safety standards. We are Melbourne, and we are right across Victoria. We are the Lanco Group, your business partner for engineering solutions. Lanco Group, we are more than you realise, and we are ready to partner with you. Pickett, she lays it off to Reza Polaris. It's an absolute peach. Is driving. to Radio Dub on FNR. I'm Pippa Frampong and with me as always is uh, Joshua Parrish. Josh, one new team that joined the Dub this year. Everyone, you know, like, no, nothing good is going to happen for the wooden spoon in the bag. Well, obviously, who I'm talking about is the Wellington Phoenix. They surprised a lot of people. First game of the Dub season. And they said, we will not lose today and we might not lose for the rest of the season. 
Do you keep a wooden spoon in a bag? I, I'd keep it in a drawer personally. Or maybe uh, a, maybe you know a what, jar. Josh? You you know what? Wellington Phoenix might break the wooden spoon and they just, they might <laughs> throw it over the fence. <laughs> Hashtag Nick's in. Nick's in there. I mean. <laughs> Very, very well played. Uh, this incredibly inexperienced team uh, managed to p- pull off an unexpected result and hopefully it's a portent of, of things to come. I mean, uh, I think they're continuing a long tradition of Wellington Phoenix as a club, as a franchise, as an organisation of being written off and proven the doubt yeah. is wrong. They can permanently have, you know, everything that the pundits have said, all of our preseason predictions up on the dressing room roll because every, every year men's team, now women's team, will pre- be predicted to finish in the bottom three, bottom four, or in this case, wooden spooners. And, uh, you know, they they were far from disgraced themselves no. out there. In fact, they uh, they look pretty decent. They absolutely did. And they were... They had their chances, actually, that they really could have, you know, nicked the point and, you know, had everybody else really, you know, looking at themselves in the mirror going... Maybe I don't know anything about football because I, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's what some of the questions I've been left with, because for a squad that is, literally I think I believe it was like seven or eight players, mm-hmm. um, of just eighteen year olds to come out in the first game, of, like away from at home but away from home weirdly, you know I I think it's very very impressive. What about the Wanderers though? Are they they ruin this missed opportunity. I, yes, definitely. I think the Wanderers had an opportunity to show everybody across the league that they were they meant business this year, mm. and they, you know, they could, they could have really like we are to find the top four is going to be something for us. But it reminds me, I don't, I know I bring up Arsenal every week, but it reminds me of Arsenal's first game in the season against uh, Brentford. It was like the perfect storm mm. to lose. You know, they it was Brentford's first time in the league in a really long time. They really wanted it was at home. They wanted to, you know bring out an amazing performance. I feel like this was the same thing for Wellington and uh, Western Sydney. They just, it was a perfect storm of we will not, we shall not be beaten today. And, you know, defenders like Kay Taylor were were very impressive. I think Western Sydney have a lot to prove this season in the dub. They've really underperformed in past campaigns. I mean, they they heavily invested in the squad. Um, Was it last year or the year before that... uh, uh, yeah, it was the year before last. Uh, sorry, because Kyra Cooney Cross was playing for yep. them that season, of course. You don't lose with Kyra. No, but uh, you know they they unfortunately absolutely petered out in the second half of the campaign. They started really strong, and then once a couple of their guest uh, visa players went home, they completely went off the rails. And since then, they haven't really recovered their form. Last season was pretty ordinary for them. I. I mean, this is one of the more, uh, I guess, adventurous and um, ambitious franchises in the competition yeah. uh, with ownership that is willing willing to spend money on the w- women's side. And, you know, this season they've got to get results, much like the men's team they've flattered to deceive. I just think that they are a team that is stuck in a little bit of a limbo mm. because they're a team, they are so far from the top two. They are... They don't know where they belong and they, they need some more players, but they also have a good enough squad that should be challenging. And mm. they have Matilda, like players who have been in the, these Matildas camps, they're in their squads. So they need to be doing more, but also... Are they in the shadow of Sydney a little bit? 100%. Because everyone wants to play for Sydney. I'll tell you what, Josh, that Sydney side, the shadow was going bigger and bigger. Every time I see them play, I go, whew. I wouldn't like to be in the same Cause, city. Because two years ago, this reminds me, two years ago they stole a whole bunch of players from Sydney FC and there was a massive exodus of players across the uh, the Sydney divide, the derby. And it made the that fixture really spicy, but it turned out that Sydney again outperformed them regardless. And then some of those players actually went back. So I just think that the Sydney program, the you know, the Sydney FC mm. program is just seems a little bit stronger and they have they are they are better equipped at keeping the players engaged in a whole campaign. Mm. And I think that at times Wellington are good for flashes throughout the season and then teeter Western Sydney, off. Western, sorry, Western Sydney. Look at me. <laughs> we have no, no conclusions to draw from Wellington. <laughs> done, done. Um, but, you know, Western Sydney, they at times just they have a few, two, three games in a row where they just really won't do anything and having slow starts, that's just feels like something that's in their DNA that they really need to, you know, 
might need to might need to drink some green juices to you know revamp the DNA or if you can do that. What, what's in the green juice? Uh, spinach, some kale maybe. I don't know. Uh, but anabolic steroids. But not banana and... like that was in Lockie's smoothie. That was horrible. Obviously, <laughs> it didn't look didn't look. Great. It's a it's a tonic to get him right exactly. for uh, Oz Football Hour next week. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's let's talk Sydney FC front three. Uh, all scoring. Uh, mm-hmm. That's a pretty impressive start for them. I mean, the uh, newy goalkeeper made life difficult in the first half, yeah. but they eventually made them pay. They were my favourite team to watch this week, mm, okay. um, actually, because the front three was clinical. My favourite, pl- my besides Kara Cooney Cross playing for victory, that was really that was amazing to watch. But for me, Courtney Vine showed why she also is up there with one of the best players in this league. The way she was intercepting some of the passes um, from Newcastle, who Newcastle are a relatively young side as well, so not too much can be made out of that, but her, she assisted the first two goals for Remy Stevenson and uh, Princess Abini, but she was just involved in everything. She was everywhere, and she got the gold that she ultimately deserved as well. Against her former club as well. Yeah. Um, she has to be one of the fastest players in the competition. So quick. It's unbelievable. And with the ball as well. She's <laughs> almost quicker with the ball than without it. I can't wait for them to come down to Melbourne so I can see them or I might have to be going on a plane to Sydney to go see her play. Because you might have to be on a plane to keep up with her. Honestly, <laughs> she's she's turb- She's an absolute jet, you know. Maybe the Flash. Maybe they do a new Flash movie. Maybe they get her in there, you know, just a little quick football uh, <laughs> dribble in the, in the middle of the film. But... They were, the Sydney front three were amazing. And, uh, you know, Mackenzie Hawkesbury, who's been on the show, obviously we're biased on this show. Anybody who comes on, Josh, as I said, mm-hmm. they become our instant favourite player. But she was also very, very good. Um, I think she, I thought she had, she could have scored so scored. But that front three, they play so well together. They movement. Because you see a lot of front threes sometimes. They all stay in the middle or they stay on the right or the left. And, you know, cross it here or there. There's not much movement inside the box, but... Sydney, they, they they just know how to they just know how to score and be really sharp as well. And I thought they looked a lot better than Melbourne Victory did, even though Melbourne Victory won five one. Yeah, well, uh, I mean they they deserved it. Uh, they could, probably could have won by more. Late red card for yeah. Newcastle didn't have too much bearing on the on the contest. But uh, Rem, Remy Seamson uh, went. On a massive goal drought last season, yeah. I remember she finally broke it against City at Amy Park that day. It was behind closed doors yes, because well, they couldn't there. get a COVID permit. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the day we did show from Amy Park. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, yeah, they, they were so delighted for her when she finally, finally scored. Uh, it's so bizarre that she went for that long without a goal because she's such a clinical finisher yeah. most of the time. That's one of her core attributes. That she's just got those instincts inside the box. So it's almost a fluke. That, yeah, no. <laughs> you know, but she's only 22 as yeah. well, which surprised me. I thought she 21, was... 21, 22 and 20, I believe, is the front three, the ages of the front three. Amazing. Yeah, so absolutely. all these players are probably yet to reach their respective peaks. Yeah. I thought Seamson had been around for a little bit longer, yeah. but that's the thing with, uh, Women's with football, yeah. dub players. You know, they tend to debut earlier and, uh, you know, have got more experience under their belts by the time they get to those early 20s. So. I will say her first goal, Remy Stevenson's first goal, dra- like the break in the drought last season, was also my first day working for FNR. So oh, maybe yeah. it's a maybe it's a coincidence, you know. Good luck, Charm. Honestly, absolutely. But they, for me, I think with also with the injury to Kayla Morrison at the end of the, the round, I think it's opened up massively the league for them because you, if you do remember that Courtney Vine was out for the last few games mm-hmm. of the season, so it it led to a little bit of the reason why they probably couldn't get a victory at the end. Um, and now with Kayla out as well, they're going to be very difficult to stop, especially if victory cannot get a defender that can, you know, be a real good leader for them. Yeah, I, I think that's the fixture where victory could come unstuck with a makeshift defence. So, uh, th- I mean, the, the top two... Looking, uh, looking likely, looking pretty nailed on after after round one at least. Uh, but two teams we didn't know what to expect from uh, this season uh, were are Perth Glory and Brisbane Raw. Perth running out two one winners with a last minute own goal, which is an absolute sucker punch for a Raw side who I thought played reasonably well in this game. Georgina Worth had just as bad, of, you know, surely having nightmares. Just as Adelaide's goalkeeper, if I do get her name correct, uh, Annalie Annalie Grove, 
They had absolute howlers in their respective games. But that uh, Perth Glory team were lucky to get out of that game with a win. But you know what? You take the points as they come because Brisbane were definitely the more dominant side of that whole 90 minutes. I'm uh, really keen to see how these young Victorian prospects do. I mean, Taylor was... Uh Tay Pellet's area, I should say, was commenting on the kind of Victorian exodus uh, to Perth this season after not being given opportunities at the Victorian-based uh, A-League women's clubs. And there are quite a few uh, Victorian talents actually in both teams. Uh, where there's Jan Chevsky's and Sakala. Lily Palmer wasn't in the squad, and but she's uh, from down here, I do you believe. The, well, yeah, she um, played for yeah, Melbourne City did. earlier. Uh, but also Annabelle Haffenden is a name I didn't realise had made the jump up from MPL, but she was playing for Brisbane Roar in this game, starting at centre-back, 19 years old, and she comes from the Alamein team, the MPLW side, who are always there or thereabouts despite limited resources compared to the top teams like Bulleen and, and South Melbourne uh, in MPLW Victoria. But they are really well coached, really well drilled uh, by Cat Smith, who's a disciple of the 4-3-3 and playing out from the back and pattern play. Um, she may as well have written the, the national curriculum. <laughs> that uh, Is that a plug? Uh, no, not the Was podcast. The actual sure? national Are curriculum sure? after which it wouldn't be a bad plug because it is a good <laughs> it is a good podcast. I haven't listened to the new episode, but it's, it was a good it was a good great podcast. Uh, but Haffenden uh, is really good on the ball and uh, pretty capable defender, and I'm keen to see how she goes this season because uh, Brisbane Raw have traditionally had a spine of Matildas in this yeah, side. They've had a bit of a ex- like a few, little bit of an exodus mm-hmm. of um, Brisbane. Replaced, but they might be seeing uh, one of them come back, Claire Polkington, maybe, if I'm not ringing Yeah, I mean, there's correct. that overlap between the Scandinavian seasons, which is always a little bit confusing, and you never quite know <laughs> where those players are uh, on their journey uh, here and there. But uh, Katrina Gorey came off the bench. Uh, Larissa Crummer started. Can we talk about that for a moment, mm. the Katrina Gorey come back? I'm so happy that she's back. Obviously, like, she had a baby, and that's obviously very, very exciting for her. But for the women's game, to have her back and... Thinking about the Matildas, knowing that we need a number, you know, a number six, she could, you know, if she spills her fit, I don't think she'll be playing, you know, anytime maybe like next year. But for the Women's World Cup, I think she'd definitely get her fitness back and we could see her in the squad. I mean, uh, long distance running and athleticism has never really been Katrina Gorey's game. Maybe over five metres she's got the speed, but, you know, she, I think she's a player that will age well and probably come back from, um, you know, her pregnancy uh, as well as any other player has because uh, she's got – she's all techers and she doesn't rely on the physical – We love all techers here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Regista Gori, make it happen. <laughs> I, number six. I mean, she's usually played in the most advanced midfield role and that's usually only – the only minutes she ever sees for the national team. But I think that's a mistake. I think yeah. she's somebody who's so press resistant who – is so adept at uh, finding those little spaces between the lines of the opposition and escaping a forward pressure that she's definitely an option that has to be looked at. But if she puts some consistent football out on the park in the A-League women's competition, I I don't see Gustafsson having any other compelling choices in that role, aside from maybe Claire Wheeler, who's a different sort of play. She's more of a ball winner. I will say that for me, if you are going to have somebody in that number six, I think I love footballers who... It's not power and pace. It's actual mm. foot, like, you know, pure techers. And she's one of those players. So to have her, if she's even an option, we say Tony Gustafsson has, have a look at her. But I will um, I will say that Tony Gustafsson's assistants, maybe they have a look at her because Tony G, I don't know if he's watching every single game. <laughs> I hope he is. I uh, hope he is. Okay, but Josh. it was a sucker punch for, for Brisbane um, yeah. in this one. Do you think Perth deserved it? I think if you take your chances, you deserve them but I will say that the it wasn't like it, it wasn't Perth's Perth didn't score that goal it was just some very unlucky and some some just a lapse in you know concentration yeah. it, was, it was very late in the game and I, I feel very badly um for their keeper but for Brisbane Ross keeper but you know what you take the chance you take the points as they come in Perth this is their first game they have won since I believe 28 or oh. I don't want to say the number wrong. Sometimes I they didn't win a game all last, last year. Seasons. So 2018, 2019. I, I might be that. 
Yeah, so it would I'm be right. 2019 would be the last time the last they won time. a game, which is crazy. Which I think is, um, if we do recall back to our episode last week and Joey was speaking about how, you know, they've really, they've built some, they are building something there and they are going to be a really exciting team to watch for the, uh, for the remainder of the season. They may not, you know, go up the table really high, but they will be very competitive in all their matches and I think that's... That's very. That's always exciting for the dub if more teams are competitive. Well, I think we should leave the A League Women review there because there's one topic that uh, you've been putting off for the whole hour. Josh, you know that sad music we started the show with with Callum Morrison. We will be having that sad music starting <laughs> for the next segment. That's what's going to happen. Everyone else is celebrating Sam Kerr winning the FA Cup over in the UK. Uh, Bakura, on the other hand, diehard Arsenal women's supporter, is ruining. Ruining their performance over I've the lots weekend. Of, lots of points, Josh. Lots of points. Lots to talk about on the other side. We are more than engineers. We are more than project managers. We are more than surveyors. We are more than infrastructure specialists. We are more than planners. So, who are we? We are problem solvers providing the highest quality service and results. We are a team of skilled professionals focused on customer needs and outcomes. We are 23 years of industry experience adhering to the highest safety standards. We are Melbourne and we are right across Victoria. We are the Lanco Group, your business partner for engineering solutions. Lanco Group. We are more than you realise, and we are ready to partner with you. Are you looking to change your destiny in life? Be your own boss? Start your own business? If you are, you need people who understand your needs and are committed to helping you make it happen. At DKP and Co Chartered Accountants, we are more than just accountants. We are business advisors, taxation consultants and strategists that specialise in setting up businesses. We understand the client and give them the very best customised advice and strategies to achieve their goals. Visit our website dkpco.com.au or give us a call today on 03 9023 9370. Fast, proactive, personal. That's DKP and Co Chartered Accountants. This is the second time we've had this sad, depressing music. Before it was about somebody else. Now it's about my feelings. Because you know what, Josh? I am sad. I've shed tears. I've yelled into a pillow. But you know what? We have to talk about it. We're going to we'll talk about it for a little bit, okay? Chelsea versus Arsenal Women's in the mm. FA Cup final. Chelsea coming out 3-0 victors, handing Arsenal their first loss that was without them scoring, which was quite upsetting. I guess Sam's Kerr scored, which is kind of nice, I guess. But for me, it was was upsetting. What about you? Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. What a oh, chip. What a no, chip. No, no, no. Stop saying Aussie, 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 because there were two Aussies on the Arsenal side. That's, you know, if we're playing the lore of... Uh, yeah, know, that's why I said it three times. Three Aussies. Two of them lost, but whatever. Everybody should be sad with me, Josh. Come on. <laughs> come on. Well, I don't think you're going to get much sympathy. I think I should get some sympathy. It wasn't even a competitive game. I, I, don't you want to watch competitive football matches? Don't you like that, Josh? <laughs> it, was a, it was a ruthless performance by one of the best teams in club football in the women's game. Not the best, but very close. Very close. And uh, last season's uh, runners-up in the Champions League. So we should clarify, this is last season's F- FA Cup that was played this year due to COVID and so yeah, forth. Yeah. So this is Joe Montemoro's achievement, his side getting to the final. It is. New new boss in the Arsenal dugout these days, uh, Joe <laughs> Montemoro over at Juventus. What do you think of, is it Jonas Eidvald? Jonas is, oh, okay. This is a big question for me. I think Jonas Eidvald is a, is a very good coach. Um, I think he's made Arsenal this season play a lot more attacking football, which we didn't at times last year do. Like last time we last season, we weren't, as clinical and ruthless as we needed to be, which we have, you know, become this season. But I think sometimes we've had 
three big matches for us, the Arsenal women this season. We've had our opening match against the Chelsea women's side, which we came out victors in. But honestly, and it, Chelsea's a lot of majority of Chelsea's players were coming back from the Olympics, so they didn't really play in that match. And we played against Barcelona in the first round of the Champions League, and we were a bit weak. And I take that down to some coaching and some tactical um, decisions. And I think this is our biggest game of the season, and I think Jonas Eidval was poor managerially. I think at half time we should have made some very clear substitutions and he didn't he waited till uh, what it was the 60th minute and when he did make a substitution it was the wrong substitution Josh okay He seems like a weird dude like he's got some eccentricities apparently he was turning the stadium PA up really high uh, to simulate the atmosphere in the ground because it was Well if he if he coached properly Josh maybe we would won <laughs> So I don't think the players could hear his instructions when they were training No no, no Josh you know he... There was also something that I heard from mm. this is from the Guardian Football Weekly when Susie Rack came on she said he was holding up colored placards Yeah it was unclear what they meant. We'll talk to everybody just else. Just like blue and red signs. They randomly, clearly like w- they were un- paddles. They were unclear to the players as well because <laughs> they didn't know what they were doing on the field. Okay, Josh. <laughs> Firstly, okay, the game was at one a.m., so I had to get up for that, and they couldn't have at least play some good football for me at one a.m. I almost woke my neighbours and my parents up. But you know what, Josh? We move. We move to the future. Mm-hmm. But Jonas, he got himself made fun of at the end of the match. Chelsea uh, manager Emma Hayes, who is phenomenal from the Arsenal system so maybe it was a win for Arsenal when I think about my spin it that way she had a a little bit of a comment for Jonas in her post-match interview yeah I'm just stalling here because the audio that we cut isn't working so I'll see if I can get it up but uh this is hilarious (laughs) she is referring here to uh, his eccentricities and superstitions. He said something about Scandinavian Josh being uh, afraid of black cats, which I'm sure you can I relate to. Hundred percent can agree with that. Come on, <laughs> you know how I feel. Uh, but uh, he also, uh, I think, riled up the Chelsea team a lot by you know saying that they weren't as good as uh, you know they were built up to be, and let's uh, make London red and all this stuff. And I, I think some of the players and the coach, it was you know talking about stuff you'd pin to the dressing room wall was extra motivation. So uh, this is what Emma Hayes uh, said about Sam Kerr's goal in the FA Cup final. London is blue. And when the third goal went in, I was simply purring. (laughs) Josh, that's the only bit of joy I've had out of that game because that was... Emma Hayes is one of my my favourite managers. She's... Absolutely amazing. She, the way she's coached that Chelsea squad for the last few seasons has been <laughs> amazing. But I don't I know. I don't know. Effect. I don't know the sound effects. It was the hand movement. I don't know what it was. I know everybody can, can hear it. But please go and find that on Twitter and actually see her hand movement because it was. I don't know what I was seeing. It was beautiful. It was. It was literally. It was uh, it was art, and um, it was like the gesture that someone makes when they say, <laughs> like, you know, sexist comment, like a cat fight or whatever. But Honestly. just repurposing it, she has, and that's they like. Sometimes I heard some cats fighting outside of my bedroom window, but there, her, her squad, they were fabulous. I, I, I can say that mm. it hurts me, but I can say it because they came out there to win. And if it wasn't for the, if it wasn't for Manuel Zinsberger, the um. Our Arsenal goalkeeper. Arsenal should have been down four, five nil. Sam Kerr had three opportunities that were clear as day that she should have put in the back of the net. And I think that's why she wanted to make fun of Manuel Zinsberger when she scored her final goal with that lovely chip inside of her boot, but it spun, I don't know, the wrong I don't know what the way the ball was spinning when she scored that third goal that everybody's been seeing after she did that little the Mbappe uh <laughs> slide. But Chelsea definitely should have won by at least five or six, if I'm correct. Five or six, 100%. you reckon? Josh, they... Is it that one side? No, no, Josh, in the first half, literally hit the woodwork. Manuel Zinsberger did some amazing ser- saves. They literally should have put, like, four behind it, especially Sam Kerr. Sam Kerr, I think she was a little bit rusty because, to be fair, she'd just come back from a flight, you know... And she had a stomach bug yeah, as well. Yeah, a stomach bug. So, and I think that's maybe why... Some of the Arsenal players didn't know what they were doing. Mm. I will say, you know, I'm a Steph Catley stan. Um, yep. I'm a massive fan. I think she's 
one of the best players in the Matilda squad, one of yep. the most consistent and reliable. And I think her being back for Arsenal this year has really helped them. She didn't have a good game. She didn't have a good game, but I think, weirdly, she was probably one of the best <laughs> Arsenal players. <laughs> no one had a good game. No one had apart a good from game. the Arsenal goalkeeper, goalkeeper and, and Steph maybe Catley. Steph Catley. Okay. And I think that she was... The third goal, to be fair, Sam Kerr did beat her on that side, which weirdly is Arsenal's strongest defensive side because we have Katie McCabe on that side who is mm. the Ireland captain and was our... Um, what's it called? Our defender last year. But she's playing further up front because of Jonas Ardvall's style. I ask, you know, why didn't anybody want to, like, you know, bring some actual footballing ability to the park? No, that's harsh. I'm just angry. I'm angry. I need to. I need to calm it down because I love this team and I have really strong, like, faith in this team. I just it just hurt me that final. So looking at the league this season, uh, Chelsea in pole position? Nope, Arsenal are because oh, we bet Chelsea in the uh, opening game of the season. But uh, what, what was different about that match? It was different about that. Arsenal played really well. It was the first game Arsenal women's had ever played at the Emirates, which I will say is quite upsetting because Arsenal women's are the best hist- historically women's side in Eng- English football. And I think mm-hmm. it's quite embarrassing for Arsenal as a club that it was only their first time playing at the Emirates this season. Um, so they were really g up for that. And Beth Mead scored two incredible goals. One was offside. She was in a different country, but the linesman... Lineswoman, sorry, missed it. But, you know, we'll take that goal and we'll take that uh, victory. But Chelsea haven't lost since then. But Arsenal have drawn since then. So they're only one go- one game, I believe. Yeah, one point ahead. One point ahead. So after moment. eight games in the Women's Super League, Man City way off the pace. Yes. Is that expected? It's it's not that it's not expect- expected. It's just that, unfortunately for them, Lucy Bronze um, and Hemp have been injured. Mm-hmm. Um, so they started really poorly. Like Arsenal absolutely thrashed them and Tottenham got a win over Man City as well. But I think that in the second half of the season, Man City will come back up further on the in the table. I think a team that's also been really good has been Manchester United as well and they bet them in the, in the, little, in the derby as well. So Final observation from me on the FA Cup. I think they need to start uh, taping the, the lid of the cup onto it uh, post-match. Mm. Did you see what happened? No, but I, I remember what happened to Arsenal, so... <laughs> yeah, actually, there was a, yeah. a mishap with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, wasn't yeah, there? It was. Um, but, you know, f- not the first mishap, um, uh, this one. that <laughs> Apparently one of the Chelsea players it came flying off in the celebrations and that Ooh. cut her above her oh, eye. No. She was bleeding. Absolutely awful. I will say... I don't think it dampened her mood yeah, too much. I will say, Josh, I, I'm not a sore loser, so I believe in staying for the full match... I will never You're leave. Not, not going to beat the traffic. No, I will never leave. If we we were losing ten 0 I will stay to the end because that is what I do. I paid money to be there. I agree. I will stay. So I watched this game all the way to the end. At you know from from one a.m. to two thirty or whatever time it finished, but I was not watching the ceremony. <laughs> I wasn't doing. <laughs> you it. can't watch the trophy can't presentation. That's that's out. too much. Close that's, my that's rubbing it in. I closed my laptop with speed and went back to sleep. I I have stopped watching games early on. The, on the on the TV on the laptop, mm. but I don't think I've ever. Oh, I have left a game early once as a fan. What was this? What was this? Josh? It was Australia Day, quite a few years ago now in the A League, and it was uh, the traditional Australia Day uh, Sydney FC Melbourne victory game yeah. at Docklands, mm-hmm. and victory lost I think five nil. And Seb Ryle, uh, so so named because he riles up the Velvet <laughs> Victory supporters, uh, scored at least one outrageous goal from like f- yeah. right fullback, and then really rubbed it into the celebration. I thought oh, that's enough. We're leaving. What We're are leaving. your other things that you don't do as a fan? Like what are, what are other things you don't do? Uh, what don't I do? Yeah, like because like I I don't, I just I refuse to leave a game early. I just don't I just don't think it's good mm-hmm. good at, like ethics, and I think it teaches. You know, younger people, like younger kids who are coming to the games, you know, you can leave games early when you should support your team through thick and thin, even though if they're emotionally destroying you like my teams are. Uh, I don't shout abuse at my own players. I think that goes without saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I don't do it in public. <laughs> I don't do it in public, Josh. <laughs> I don't do it in public. I, I criticise, but I don't know. abuse is different. Oh, no, okay, yeah. I don't do it in public. I'll groan, I think. I'm more of a groaner when someone does the wrong thing. But I have been known to only watch games by myself because I am incapable of watching games around other people because I will... It will not be an enjoyable experience for the other people who are watching with me because I 
yell at my TV. I yell at the players like they can hear me, like I'm giving some coaching instructions. I might get angry for a moment, but I reserve the right as a football fan to change my opinion of them 30 <laughs> seconds later when they do the right thing, okay? Okay. And that's 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 my ultimate belief. Mm. Um, but, yeah, any other things you don't do as a, as a fan? Uh, I mean, just talking about changing your opinion of players, it was <laughs> very funny getting two text messages from my Manchester United supporting friend uh, about 30 minutes apart. <laughs> Fred, WTF. Fred, all is forgiven. This is <laughs> the Red Fred redemption. Uh, I... But- I once um, made a made a, a post on Facebook and I was quite upset because I think we'd lost to maybe... We'd lost to Norwich. Never post angry. That's yeah, no, no, we'd lost to Norwich and Granite Jacker, Mustafi had been horrendous, absolutely horrendous. I know this woman, we talk about women's football here, but I'm just, just you know, just give me my, my example. Mm-hmm. They were absolutely trash, and I wrote this piece on Facebook and I was like... <laughs> they, you they, they, they suck, they don't know how to play football, blah, blah, blah. And then right at the bottom, I obviously wrote, I reserve the right to change my opinion. <laughs> In the middle of the season, disclaimer. Disclaimer, I reserve the right. So don't talk to me about this post when Arsenal are top of the league. But it didn't happen, obviously. This post is being authorised by Piku or Frimpong. <laughs> exactly. Always have the right <laughs> to change Terms and conditions mind. apply. Um, well, Josh, thank you for joining me on this episode of Radio Dove. First week, first... Well, first show during the season. Mm. We have many more to come. Hopefully we have some some great guests. Um, but as always, everybody else, you can catch us catch up on the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere you listen to your podcasts. On SoundCloud as well. We're on there as well. We're obviously. on SoundCloud. Uh, we're everywhere. Um, we're like Spider-Man. Uh, see you next week, guys. Pickett, she lays it off to Reza Polaris.